You're watching the Motorola Moto G Play 2023 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, the plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and run along the edges to pop off the catches. There's some adhesive underneath the camera bezel as well as the fingerprint sensor, so you'll need to heat these areas up a little bit to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then you'll have to press down on the Motorola logo or the fingerprint scanner to separate it from the back housing. Here's a better look at the plastic back housing. The camera bezel can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace that. Looking at the other side, we can see antenna flex cables on the top and bottom as well as graphite film to help transfer heat. There are 19 T5 or Torx 5 screws which need to be removed. The glass camera lens covers can also be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. Again, you don't need to take apart the phone to replace those. Here's a look at the other side. At this point, the battery cable can be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. The coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. There's a single T5 or Torx 5 screw holding on the main board. Looking at the main board, there's a 16 megapixel primary camera and the 2 megapixel depth and macro lens. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. Also, none of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is the white sticker over here, some copper tape on the shield's top transfer heat, and the secondary microphone underneath the shield. The headphone jack is located here, and there's a rubber gasket around it. The proximity sensor is located on the other side, as well as the SIM card and memory card reader, and we have a better look at the 5 megapixel front facing camera. There's some more copper tape on the back shields, as well as thermal paste to help transfer heat. Once the shield covers have been removed, we can see more thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. Here's a better look at the speaker assembly. There is a single T5 or Torx 5 screw holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, the primary microphone is located underneath the shield, and the charger port is located here with a rubber gasket around it. Here's a look at the other side. On this phone, the mesh filter and rubber gasket for the microphones are located on the rim of the frame, so if you accidentally happen to use your SIM ejector tool in the wrong hole, you would actually puncture the microphone filter and gasket. However, you won't damage the microphone itself, but you'll lose any sort of protection against moisture or any debris getting in. We can also see an old school vibrator motor located over here. When it comes to removing the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry the battery off. So we'll need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry the battery off.
Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. Once the battery has been removed, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is routed through an opening in the mid frame. If you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back housing, the screws on the top and bottom covers, and remove those covers. You then have to disconnect the battery cable and the screen cable, as well as the cables on the subboard. And then you'd have to remove the subboard and the battery, giving you access to the screen cable and the cable for the subboard, which are both routed through an opening in the mid frame, at which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, and reapply the new screen, making sure we run the flex cables back to the openings in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located on this side. If you need to replace that, you just have to gently peel it off. And the earpiece speaker is located on top, which is held down with some adhesive. There is also another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is seated on the frame underneath the SIM reader. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.